your inner world is always going to be first and, and then that inner impacts your outer world, right? Yeah. That inner space. It's like that mentality creating the reality. We're the only species on this planet that can carry this thing called imagination. Hey. You already know. It's the Joe Kingdom Perspective. What in the world is going on? Welcome back to the Joe Kingdom Perspective. This is the show that gives you a Kingdom Perspective on clips taken from the Joe Rogan experience so that you might discern, perceive, see comprehend just how the kingdom is advancing in the most unexpected of places in the most unexpected of ways and through the most unexpected of people and i know someone that loves the unexpected because he's allergic to average <laughs> is my good friend matt lee matt you were actually the first sponsor of any of the joe kingdom <sighs> perspective yes. episodes so thank you for that my friend i'm uh, actually rocking the swag yes. right now but allergic to average is not just a clothing brand that has some fantastic this, this uh you know, clothes, apparel, apparel, the gear, the apparel, gear, yes, yes. swag, all of those things. <laughs> it's actually much more than that. Uh, I've known you a long time, Matt. You're a good friend of mine. You are a kingdom guy who is really bringing impact to culture with a high value for community and mentorship. Tell the people uh, what allergic to average really is and what it encompasses. All right. Well, yeah, my name is Matt Lee. And so uh, with allergic to average, this is a mentality. It's a lifestyle and it's a brand. And so the mentality space is so much of, um, man, just a new way of thinking. This was actually a brand that was a product of a season and really some situations that I was going through. Um, and so in that, just building the power of thought and your beliefs and, um, which is so crazy to have like this episode right now. Cause I'm like right in the thick of a different chapter of doing that. Yeah. Revisiting some beliefs. Um, because those beliefs start to go into like, you know, the thoughts that we produce and then those thoughts produce emotions and feelings within. And so like a lot of these things go back to, um, what are you thinking about primarily? Right. And yeah. like, what is it that's dominating that space within your mentality? Cause out of that mentality creates this reality, like that we go out and we see every single day. And so I feel like the average person has it backwards, right? It's mm -hmm. like. How do I change the outside, this reality that I don't like or I don't feel good in? And then how do I, you know, hopefully feel happier by doing that when the alternative really, the allergic to average approach, um, which is now developed into curriculum and I need to finish a book, right? Publish a book. Um, but taking that into middle schools, high schools, colleges, working with young adults, um, the big adults, the full, full, the, <laughs> the full the size full, adults, <laughs> full size, not the fun size ones, but all <laughs> like all the way. And so, uh, man, it's it's something that is more than just clothing. It's it's a message. Absolutely. It's a it's a uh, it's a reminder, and I think it's a way of thinking that uh, has to be intentionally like dove into you don't just accidentally become allergic to average no you don't accidentally be, become somebody living uh intentional and doing things on purpose with purpose so allergic to average embodies all that and our clothes is an echo and kind of a reflection of that and so uh yeah that's a, that's that's allergic to average man super good man i love how you you're looking to bring impact to culture that benefits the world but you've identified that the way i do that is going after the individual's mindsets and uh you know and you figured out a way to do it with a pretty good range of generations that you have the ability to speak into and you I, i've watched you you have an ability to address the same topics but use utilizing language and imagery and illustrations that allow you know uh, kids you know college age young adults yeah. to all you're able to speak their language the same truth but tailored for them and really it gives them permission it's an invitation for them to be, begin to engage a new way of looking at things which will produce a whole different lifestyle that they engage in i'm a big fan of course at the end of the show uh, i'll have you give the people all the different places they can Thank connect you. with you really love the new uh videos you just dropped on youtube they're excellent can't encourage you guys to watch those enough, but not right now because we're in the middle of a show. <laughs> That's right. And that shows the Joe Kingdom perspective. And this is where we play a clip from Joe Rogan. Let's do that. And uh, you <laughs> selected this clip and he's hanging out chatting with his longtime friend, one of the best comedians in the world, good old Adam Sandler. Mm. And so uh, we're going to play it. this clip and then we'll revelate about it, man. It's going to be it. a good time. 
Stand up's the best. It's a crazy thing, and then no one can teach you how to do it either. You have to figure it out yourself because your way of doing it is different than my way of doing it. My way is different than Kevin's way. Yeah. Kevin's way is different yeah. than fucking Seinfeld's way. Everybody's yes. got a different way of doing it. Absolutely. And nobody can teach you how to do it. You can learn some things yes. from watching other people. You can learn some things. From, oh, man, yeah. But How about when somebody fucking great watches you and says, hey, you know what you could say here, and gives you a great line, you're like, oh, my God, yes. thank you. No, that's you, huge. That, what a feeling. You just made my okay thing into a fucking one I'm excited to do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's been a couple of bits that I've had that it got attacked from a friend, and it's just like pops it up. Oh, and it, it, you're like, how yeah. did I ever do it without that fucking line? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes like a fresh eye, you know? That's one of the things that I always admired about how Chris Rock used to do it. Because yeah. Chris Rock would go on stage... Yeah. He'd work his stuff out, and then he'd have a bunch of guys that he would hire to yes. sit in the back of the room yeah. and kind of workshop with them. I got, I do, I do similar stuff. Very I have, smart. I have these young guys who are fucking way funnier at writing than me, and I, cause, only because I'm fucking tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I walk into the office and I'm like, I thought of this funny thing last night. Maybe something there. I'll say it to them, and they'll go, "Oh yeah," and they'll fucking write something interesting, and, and we come up with something together eventually. Well, you're used to co collaborating when you do films, right? Yes, yes. I always do that. Always got yeah. a bunch of guys that, that helped me out throughout the whole movie. Yeah. That's such a good process. Yes. Because, you know, one mind is great, but a bunch of minds together in different yes. perspectives. People are going to see things from an angle that you're not going to see. Yes. Man, it's so good. I loved how they start off the conversation talking about your way of doing things. It's mm. going to be different from everybody else. And I love just the play on words there of finding your way. Yes. And, and so how do you find your way? You have to find the true expression of you, the unique factor of who you are that's different from everybody else. Because really, culture will kind of coax you into just kind of conforming to the way that everything is, you know, and, and comfortability can end yep. up really being something that shuts you down. But your way is different. No one, and I loved how they said, no one can teach you how to be you. <laughs> now, I, I love that people can help they can lend their strength to you, their insights, their perspectives to help amplify you so that you show up bigger, you show up louder, but they can't teach you how to be you. Right. Only you can express who you are. And so talk to us about uh, some of the ways that allergic to average and that mindset and, and the mentorship that you provide. How do you help people discover their way, who they really are? Yeah. And I think a lot of that, man, it stemmed from a a lot of pain of me trying to figure out who am I, you yeah. know? And I think, so <clears throat> with that mentorship, and really what I loved about even getting to explore this episode with you is because you play, you still play that role in my life. And so from, from a really early age, man, there's some stuff that they talked about. And I was like, dude, that was, that was with Dub. <laughs> <laughs> young <laughs> Matt. <laughs> the young Matt Lee. But, uh. The long white tee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah going worldwide and now we're over here on countryside i mean I we've been together for a while this guy <laughs> right here come on but one of the one of the things that um you know yeah looking back at the young matt lee i i would look at you know mentors and um what was other like spiritual fathers um just leaders in general that would help and sometimes i felt like well what they're doing that became my way, right? Mm. That's kind of, or maybe I need to do more of that, which wasn't a bad thing, but that um, kind of edifying and sharpening and getting to, that's really what it's meant to do to help you find you, right? Yeah. It's not, I mean, and I think obviously it's so easy to see, oh, that's what works or that's what worked for him or her or, or, or them. So that's what I need to do. But there's something that, it goes beyond our belief system. I feel like as individuals for a long time, if we allow it where we don't believe that we are actually uniquely brilliant enough mm. or uniquely gifted or called or chosen, or there's a lot of these words. And so the comparison of um, what we start to do or trying to compare like, well, this is the way I've been doing it, but he has success or they have success or this other company, or this other family, and then that almost becomes your way. You know, sometimes, a lot of times, subconsciously, you don't even realize it. But to have the courage to, man, take all your beliefs, 
your past experiences, what you've overcome, you know, and then realize like, you know, how does this make me uniquely me with the perspective that I carry with the things that I can bring? And so a lot of that within allergic to average is I, before allergic to average was ever a thing, like I said, I was, I was a product of having to learn how to think different yeah. about myself, about my future, about God, about uh, what's possible. Because in one of the, the, the darkest moments of my life, I mean, I had no belief that I was, I was good enough or my way was going to be sustainable to, to achieve success or happiness even. And so, so much of the approach now with allergic to average is getting people to understand the currency and the value of them. Like if you don't start with, with yourself, I think you're always going to have to come back to that foundational point of you got to build on this, anything, whether that's a family, whether that's your future, a business, um, even your personal health and wellness. Like it goes back to like, those things, I mean, the 8A core four, these are kind of our primary, like our, our um, or I should say our, our foundational pillars, right? Mm -hmm. And so those things are, it was these things that I desperately needed at a time in my life that I had to begin to understand and revisit and create new beliefs around. And then as I looked around or, you know, still those um, core four are, critical i think for every single person to understand their value to understand their greatness to understand that they're they're enough you know and so mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day that's so much of the message that we are pushing and promoting to put out in the world is like dude your your inner world is always going to be first and and then that inner impacts your outer world right yeah. that inner space it's like that mentality creating the reality and so how to help people do that it's just kind of been the, it was the starting point, And now we just learned to kind of go a little bit deeper with people yeah. in that. It's so good. And I love how everything that you're doing and everything you're communicating, it's all kingdom, but it's covert. You're making it mm -hmm. available uh, so that you're able to show up powerfully in universities and colleges and, and quote unquote secular spaces, but you're just bringing the keys of the kingdom and making them available to humanity uh, from a platform that they're able to receive from easily. And so when you talk about the inner world affecting the outer world, uh, many of you may have heard Ryan and I talk about how, you know, you have to establish the kingdom within. That's right. And once you do that, the kingdom will naturally expand out around you. And so you, you have just been so masterful in engineering language that captures the heart of the younger generation and makes these truths available to them. Uh, and you can show up anywhere and bring it without getting canceled or shut down. And I love that. <laughs> and I know all of you are like, well, he talked about the core four, the, the pillars, but, but he didn't tell us what they are. Don't worry, my friends. I will pull them out of him momentarily. <laughs> uh, but we're not there quite yet. Not yet. Hold on. Uh, I really liked what you were talking about because I've made this mistake myself. And it was, uh, you know, if we idolize a mentor, then we end up just trying to be like them. Yeah, that's good. But when we honor a mentor, then we have the ability to just receive inheritance from them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to idolize somebody because then I want to be them instead of me being me. I want to honor somebody and then I get to inherit things from them that are beneficial to me. And so I, I don't ever see someone and say, oh man, I wish I was them or I want to be just like them. I see people and I'm like, oh man, I love how they do yes. that. Oh man, they figured out a key there. That's why that aspect of their life is working better than mine. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as long as there's that honor going both ways between the mentor and the mentee, where the mentor uh, is a champion of my uniqueness, and, uh, and I am a, uh, a recipient through honor of their wisdom and all the things that, man, they have worked out, you know, yep. then that's when that, that mentorship mentee exchange really has an ability to take place. And that's when the true wealth of generations really allows people to achieve acceleration on a whole nother level. Oh yeah. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by School of Kingdom, the premier online school for equipping kingdom reformers. In order to follow along with the movement, simply search School of Kingdom on all social media platforms. So um, when they, I loved how they began to talk about, and these are two 
big dogs and old dogs, man. <laughs> they've been around. They've done it bigger than anybody else. And it's so cool to hear that they are inviting young men to sit at the table with them. And that's so cool because, you know, those young men have got to be like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I get to sit and, like, brainstorm jokes Dude. with Adam Sandler. Yes. <laughs> and Adam is like, I'm tired. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I honor the energy that you have and the, the creative way that you think. And he even said, these guys are funnier than I am. Like, how cool is that, right. man? Like, seriously. Adam has receipts <laughs> and he's able to say, man, I've gathered up some young guys are funnier than I am. I come in, I just give them an idea. They run with it. And all of a sudden we have something beautiful. Mm. And I love that, that flow of honor that's going on there and how they are leveraging all of that to create. And, uh, I think this is a good segue into <laughs> pillar number one. I see you. Uh, <laughs> yes, I see you. So yeah, with, with the 8A core four. Okay. So the first one is create. Okay. And so with that, like that, becomes something that I think we have to go back to and really even at times the importance and, and also the responsibility that we carry. Because as um, humans, like we start to discount our ability to create, yet we're doing it all the time. Absolutely. Like all day, every day. We are creating from... Um, just experiences to reactions to emotions to responses to I mean so it's always happening and so create is if you don't if you don't see yourself with this ability that you actually have been created with created to create so that's actually on hey, like uh, some it. of our t-shirts that's on our tags you are created to create right so it gives you that that responsibility back to say hey you that's who you are yeah. But if you don't know who you are, then you live something else that is not reflective yeah. of the truth of you. And so the, the funny thing about it is one thing I talk about is, you know, even the average person that doesn't identify as a creator or a creative type, they're still creating. Yeah. They constantly are all day, every day. And they're just not acknowledging it. <laughs> right. Or maybe they maybe a kinder way. Some people just aren't acknowledging it. Yes. Some people may have been told they've been robbed of their perception of that by being told they're not creative or or yep. whatnot, you know, but 100 percent. Everybody is creating all the time. And I love that you are, are bringing that to the table in the conversation. Continue. Yeah. Well, and so the crazy part, though, and this is kind of like the part that nobody really likes to talk to talk about. But so like the average person that's not doing it on purpose, with purpose, like seeing the intentional ways of things to create, cultivate, build, they're still creating. But we find that those people, okay, and track with me, because I'm sure there's going to be people in your mind that come to mind, <laughs> right? But these people are creating um, more chaos in our world. Mm. They're creating probably more drama, right? Dude, that Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? I told Ryan you. is the least chaotic person I know. Right. Total joke. <laughs> but these are the people that are just creating what we see is sometimes, I'm not saying they're the reason. I'm saying they're still creating, but because it's not intentional and it yes. doesn't have a vision, it doesn't, they're, they're able to have that creative power and nature still at work, but they're creating a negative experience Dang. within them. Yeah. Tormenting thoughts sometimes start to become the, like, there is no foundation, so anything can fall and land now mm -hmm. in the mind, right? And yeah. in the heart. Um, there was, I guess, so much of the the work for me within my journey and in, in being, you know, and growing to be allergic to averages, like allowing myself to see what is it that I've been called to create? Like even, I mean, that's a much deeper, far, further talk we could take that. But like, what am I even passionate about creating? Like, what do I even care about creating what do i want to bring into this world like what would i love to to bring into existence something right and so um getting people back to the, like this is something that you have the pleasure the responsibility the joy of of getting to do we're the only species on this planet that can carry this thing called imagination hey right that that helps us to get out of today right here this moment and, and almost casts a vision to say, what would be different if I did this? Or what would it look like if I took on that job or took, took that risk? What, what, what it, and like the crazy part is like, we know that, you know, that's a superpower and it's, and it's itself right there. But mm -hmm. so many people have 
almost because you don't realize your ability to create or that you can you can do this the imagination so much st- it stemmed from that right like that mm-hmm. creative uh vision or to see things but a lot of us like the average person is allowing their their imagination to just die yeah. like to kind of just like they have no no truth with that or maybe what i imagine just is that's silly and our culture stifles that yes okay it's time to grow up those, right those dreams are cute stop dreaming but- right <laughs> all right go get a job yeah. yeah that's a cool idea and so uh yeah anyways that's that's so much of the cre- create pillar that foundational pillar of getting you back to create and with create you know so that takes us into the other three because first we want people to realize that the most purposeful thing and really the biggest priority is how do you start to create a heart and a mind that serves you, right? We yeah. call that the two in you. So allergic to average, that oh, two snap. is the two in you, which is the heart and the mind. Now mm-hmm. that's that thing that, those two things that uh, make us just like every other, you know, of the 8 billion people on our planet. And it's the awesome, it's also that the, the two things that make us uniquely yeah. creative, brilliantly, like all these were different, like yeah. different, right? That's what makes you allergic to average. So the well being of that, right? Mm-hmm. How you are creating new meanings, new experiences within your heart, within your mind, within this mentality that is kind of combined and collaborated between both of those places within us helps us to go into the second one, which is uh, the second foundational uh, pillar for allergic to average is love. And before you get into that one, I love what you're saying there, man, because, uh, you know, scripture says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, yes. right? So you, you keying in on the heart and the mind and being able to bring that to the table in secular spaces where people maybe haven't really thought about that connection and highlighting that is so powerful. I loved how you talked about imagination. Uh, Dan McCollum says that the most powerful nation on earth is the imagination. <laughs> and the that. weakest nation on earth is procrastination. Oh, I was like, hey, he's dropping bars right <laughs> now. <laughs> That's what we need one of those. <laughs> yes. And the creativity of humanity is so incredible because there are other creations that can create like uh, a bird is going to create a nest a beaver is going to create a dam but pardon my language but why is it that they generations they just create the same thing Mm. i've never seen a bird's nest with a hot tub on the side i've never seen you know there's no creativity to dream to engage that imagination there's an instinct to create and they create the same thing oh oh it's average now but the imagination of humanity allows that creative to become creativity, which allows us to mm. produce uniqueness upon the earth. And so I loved how you said you were created to create, but what place do we create from? Mm. Pillar yes. two. Let's get yes. it, man. So the second one would be love, okay? And so we call this the lens of love. Um, and there's a couple of different things that I learned along the way. I mean, some of that was from you, being in the space within the kingdom space and and learning but man love is that thing that like it's it's if we we sometimes want to go back to like what is the answer like what do we what what do we fight for what's worth it like at the end of the day what can we always come back to and it it's this this concept this idea right this experience of love and so for me love was one thing kind of like growing up as i experienced that but um even when it came to my relationship with god right? Um, God is love. And so I feel like to really get to the, 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 the core of what that is, man, it's something that it's actually not always convenient. You know, love is not always, um, you know, the happy place, the sweet, um, happy ever after, you know, like love sometimes is it's like staying in the pocket or it's staying in that that position that you're like man i want to quit i want to give up but love says hey i got i need to do this yeah right love sometimes is like you don't want to like take the risk or maybe it's even like make the investment but love says this is going to make you better even if that's not what you feel like you want right Mm -hmm. and so love becomes a lens and it has to be like this this approach that we first start with loving yourself now that's a that's a topic that of course our our culture talks more about now our society in general but and that's really just been in our lifetimes we've yeah. seen that come come in it's just been super interesting right and, and i think that's great of course and i think the next step is to like really evaluate okay so if you love if you do love yourself then love looks like something okay yeah. and that's not just for self that's 
I mean, we recognize that across our world, right? Like you can turn on uh, news or you can watch social media and like when you see something ugly or like, ugh, like you know, that looks like hate, that looks like fear, that yeah, looks facts. like, but when you see something that makes you almost want to tear up or smile or you, that looks like love, right? Yeah. And so it also, it's the same for us. Like you can say, hey, I love myself. And so for a while, I mean, I was like, yeah, I like me. I love me. I'm, I'm, I appreciate me. But the evidence of that, like the actual tangible uh, steps or, or evidence of that wasn't there. Mm. You know, cutting out time for myself. Um, maybe that's, you know, things like meditation, taking a walk, praying, um, talking to mentors. At, there's been seasons where I'm not actually truly loving myself because there's actually no evidence of it. It's just mm. more of a concept that I say or I have. And so love becomes something that as you give it to you, you introduce it's, it becomes a, a strategy for becoming more. Uh, Anytime love's involved, right? Uh, in a marriage, you, you don't you don't come into the marriage being the the husband. You don't come into being a parent being the parent. You don't come into a business being the guy or girl. But the love for that actually allows you to produce and stay again in the fire when it when it, it gets really painful and allows you to become more. And I feel like with allergic to average, we talk about love is a life strategy. And mm -hmm. I learned that from, you know, of course, other mentors, but to actually take that from like more of this definition I see of like, oh, a life strategy using love and to actually begin to demonstrate that, right, became something that I was like, okay, I'm sold on it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of things that I can say, that we can all say. There's a lot of things that sometimes we can, you know, we can do for people or in helping or out of kindness, but it's this experience. It's like this vibration of love and, and, and that kind of energy that you can lead, like that leaves people actually change that experience. And there's been a lot of times where I didn't have money or I didn't have the time to give to somebody, but just talking to them or just praying for them. It's like, that was enough in that moment. Um, didn't seem like it, but that was enough to say that love, love is going to continue to win today. Come even on. if it's not this grand gesture of love, love is so much more powerful and bigger than, um, I think that we often come to the conclusion of so man that's such a, such a big deal i love i love that whole picture you were painting and i think that love is the multiplier of the kingdom mm. whenever love is in the mix things are going to grow and uh, i would say that love is the road that the trinity travels on mm -hmm. and so anytime that we are intentional to lay the groundwork the foundation of love in our path then that invites the supernatural partnership of the trinity into what we're doing yes and then man that changes everything uh, you know from school of kingdom i'm big on origin identity purpose destiny and that uh create well you were created by the creator, the most creative one of all time in order to create, to produce something upon the earth. Identity, oh man, you are a loved son or daughter mm. of God. And so, uh, but when we get from origin to identity, and now it's time for purpose, well, you got to produce something when it mm -mm. comes to purpose. Uh oh. And, uh, you know, I just want to uh, preface this one because I think it's important to honor language and honor that different generations or different moments in people's lives, language can be helpful and where it can be detrimental. So the word you're about to drop sometimes takes some heat in some king oh, yeah. kingdom circles. You already know, it's the Joe Kingdom Perspective.